Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. It's not common to see part of a ship's hull that stays below the waterline. However, most people do take note of the fact that this area is often painted bright red. This is a long-held maritime tradition, but it's also based on pretty impressive science. In the early days of sailing, ships would paint their holes in copper, or copper oxide paint, to keep away barnacles and wood-eating worms. In doing so, they could maximize the structural integrity of their hull and keep it from collecting gunk and other organisms. Over time, various companies have developed new and more advanced versions of what they call anti-fouling paint. These materials are specifically designed to slow the growth of marine organisms and even facilitate their detachment. The primary goal is to maintain the vessel's overall performance and durability while streamlining the cleaning process. These systems still use various oxides and copper compounds, but they now contain chemical biocides stored inside the porous sections of the paint. Of course, in keeping with thousands of years of maritime tradition, the vast majority of these paints are red in color. Here you can see a protective anti-fouling coating being applied by technicians from Germany's WIWA Wilhelm Wagner GmbH and Company. The process begins with the removal of all buildup on the bottom of the ship, including dirt, grime, and biological material. The old paint is then removed using a sandblaster or other powerful paint removal agent. Due to the sheer amount of surface that needs to be covered during these processes, many painting companies have started using smart, laser-guided robots to speed up the process. Once the surface is prepped, most of the painting is done either by hand or using precision machines. The process is time consuming, but not delicate. The main goal is to create a solid barrier between the ship and the elements. So ensuring complete coverage is the only way to protect the vessel's hull completely. Some anti-fouling paints are designed with Teflon and silicone. These create a surface that is simply too slippery for growth to develop. Others are porous, containing slow-release biocides that destroy buildup once attached. Ship owners can determine which paint is best depending on their vessel's operating location, the local climate, and more. Though most commercial vessels are painted white or red above the waterline, military ships tend to be painted a medium gray color. The reason for this is actually quite interesting. In the early days of naval warfare, United States ships were painted with a bizarre camouflage pattern to confuse the enemy regarding their direction and number. 
gray was found to be the best color for reducing the ship's contrast against the horizon. This makes the vessels much harder to spot in most situations, as they will either blend in with the clouds or the waterline, depending on the distance. Still, in recent years, some U.S. Navy personnel have expressed interest in attempting ship-based camouflage yet again. The first combat vessel to get this new coating style was the USS Freedom, a literal combat ship. Its low visibility camouflage style is a mix of dull black and three types of gray, making it much more difficult to spot using visual methods. Up in the air, the same sort of rules apply. Though military aircraft have been painted a myriad of colors over the years, most modern planes and helicopters embrace the same sort of medium gray tone as naval vessels. Here, you can see an Airbus A400M Atlas military transport craft being painted by a crew in Seville. Fresh out of the factory, most of the paint's parts are covered in a protective coating to reduce corrosion. After the paint is mixed, it is applied methodically to aircraft parts. As with any other paint job, those parts, not coated in a particular color, are covered with tape or other barriers. This also allows the crew to paint patterns, service numbers, and even safety information directly on the surface of the aircraft. Fighter jets have traditionally been painted to suit the environments in which they operate. During Vietnam, F-4 Phantoms boasted camouflage paint jobs to blend in with the canopy jungle below. During Desert Storm, F-16s would be painted a light beige to better operate in desert environments. In the case of this F-15 Eagle, the 48th Fighter Wing is giving it a paint job reminiscent of the P-47 Thunderbolt, the World War II-era prop fighter used by the United States and UK forces. This type of coating is known as a heritage paint job and is more about paying tribute than functionality. On the other hand, some fighter jet paint jobs are extremely functional. That's the case with the F-22 Raptor. which utilizes special paint on the inside of its inlets, as well as on the outside portions of the aircraft fuselage and wings. In order to ensure an even coat of this radar-absorbing material, many facilities have begun implementing robotics during the painting process. This helps keep personnel from entering small, confined spaces and attempting to paint from the inside out. Many experts consider these stealth coatings to be the wave of the future. With newer aircraft like the F-35 also boasting radar absorbent paint jobs to help them evade detection. The 
concept of stealth aircraft has been around for decades. And it requires a lot more than just paint to achieve the desired effect. Perhaps the most recognizable example is the Lockheed F-117 Nighthawk, a twin-engine attack aircraft first introduced in 1981. By designating an aircraft as stealth, engineers mean that it is specifically designed to avoid detection by minimizing the reflection and emission of radar, infrared, visible light, radio frequency, and audio signatures. Though no plane could ever be truly invisible to the naked eye, it can be nearly invisible to modern instruments. In the F-117's case, the plane's faceted angle surfaces heavily reduce its radar signature. It also features non-afterburning engines to reduce the chances of thermal detection and heavy radar-absorbent sheets that add nearly a ton to the aircraft's overall weight. Though it served for several decades, the F-117 was considered very difficult to fly and was eventually retired from active combat duty. Nearly 20 years before the Nighthawk first took flight, Lockheed introduced one of the very first stealth aircraft designs, the SR-71 Blackbird. This high-speed, high-altitude reconnaissance plane is one of the most recognizable military aircraft in the world. Its stealth components mostly focused on its shape and materials, which reduced its radar cross-section. It also boasted an early form of radar-absorbent paint, which was imbued with ferrite particles to soak up radar energy. But the real reason the SR-71 was so hard to detect was its insane capabilities. The SR-71 boasted an operating ceiling of 85,000 feet and could travel at more than 2,200 miles per hour. This made it the go-to spy plane throughout much of the Cold War era. Though it has long been retired, the SR-71 still holds several records. For instance, in 1976, it was named the fastest air-breathing aircraft, reaching speeds of Mach 3.3. It also achieved an altitude record of 85,069 feet for sustained flight. Only 32 of these incredible aircraft were ever constructed, and most of those still surviving are now located in Air Force museums worldwide. Here you can see an SR-71 static display at Beale Air Force Base in California. Though this aircraft is no longer operational, retired mechanics and pilots often work with active duty airmen to help maintain the plane so future generations can enjoy it. This includes cleaning the plane from top to bottom, which is a pretty detailed job considering it is 100 feet long and boasts a 55-foot wingspan. This cleaning process is completed every four months or so, giving both military personnel and civilians a chance to see one of the greatest planes ever designed in all its glory. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.